So today we're going to be addressing the responses and doing a part two, which I call the TikTok Nestorian Delusion, part two. Hello everyone and God bless. This is Father Mikhail, Father Michael, with another episode of Living Orthodox. And uh, today, uh, we're going to get straight into the video so that all you people out there who have been deceived can see the reality that no, Mar Mario Emmanuel has lied to you. He is an historian. And his definition of what they mean by two natures versus what we mean in the Orthodox context and in most Protestant and Catholic circles are two very, very different things. You know, there's a confusion of terms and things are not very clear when an historian speaks. They try to use language that is subversive and close to what we say in order to voice their heresy. This was the tactic that Arius used and this is the tactic that Nestorius uses. And of course, being an affluent speaker, Marmar Emanuel has much in common with his forebear. So let's get into the video. <laughs> So, as you can see, right from the mouth of the man himself, Mary did not give birth to God, nor to a human being, as Arius had said, but to Christ. So let's be very clear. And then he, he, he's, to just quickly go back, and then he says, as St. Nestorius said. Let's be extremely, extremely clear on this. He is not professing proper Christology. This is heresy, by definition. If Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is not God, he's then not one and consubstantial with the Father. So who is he? What's the purpose of the incarnation? How does salvation occur? Bad news, it doesn't. He only saves himself at the most. But then define what is Christ. Well, Nestorius, when he was first made uh, patriarch of Constantinople, or as, as it rightly at the time was known as his Archbishop of Constantinople, uh, in 427, had started very shortly after his ascent to the Episcopal throne, after his consecration, very shortly into his time, as, uh, as St. Vincent of Lorraine said, he metamorphosed from a sheep to a wolf and was clearly an unhappy man and started saying that it was improper to call Mary, the Virgin, our Blessed Lady, Theotokos, and instead we should call her Christotokos. And actually, the Lady rebelled against him and told him he was a heretic. They had a major outcry. And of course, as we know, 198 fathers in that ecumenical council condemned him. People need to realize something. These issues are not little issues. I had someone say, forgive me, I'm just, I'm just being honest. A really stupid comment when they said that the character of Christ is more important than his identity. If we don't know the identity of Christ, then how the heck are we going to know anything about his character? This is literally trying to put the cart before the horse. And, and it, it's, it's absolute madness. The, the cult of personality surrounding this man is not healthy. Okay, Marmar Emmanuel is not a saint. He's not Christ. I've had people call me Judas. I've had people call me a Pharisee. Go and watch the video. I refer to him as a heretic, a hereticos, because he has chosen even by his own church's standards to go off on his own to be the bishop of his own church he's not even a bishop of a diocese and not only that he is an ecumenist there's more than one heresy at play he says and i'm going to throw up right here on the screen for you to see 
This is a screenshot from his website, Christ the Good Shepherd, in Australia, that as long as you're Roman Catholic and communion with Rome, Eastern Orthodox or Oriental Orthodox, you can commune at his church. Well, guess what? His view of the Eucharist is not the same as ours because Christ is no longer Theos because who is the Theo in Theotokos? This is referring to Christ. This is referring to him as God. This isn't semantics. This isn't hair splitting. Let's break down his video once more. I'm going to roll the clip. <laughs> So right there, he says, Mary did not give birth to God. The reason why Theotokos matters, why St. Kirill of Alexandria even points this out in his letters to Nestorius, his refutations, is because this is the subject. This speaks of the subject and who was born. Christ is a divine person. He's an infinite divine person who is pre-eternal and co-eternal with the Father. Therefore, even though he assumed human nature, he and hypostasized human nature, took on the whole of human nature, the whole of universal human nature, to be clear. He himself is not a human person. He is a divine person. By saying she did not give birth to God, he's actually denying the divinity of Christ. And then saying to call her Christotokos, this doesn't reveal anything divine. The way the theologically illiterate Nestorius, who all his contemporaries refer to him as that, the Socrates, um, not Socrates, the Greek philosopher, his last name is escaping me, referred to him as theologically illiterate, who's one of his contemporaries. Many other saints of the time said, he, including St. Vincent Lorenz, pointed out that he was illiterate. He did not, he was a lettered man, but he was not well read on the fathers and on theology. And so this, this isn't hair splitting. When we say that you know, she's Christotokos, we're denying that the person she birthed was God himself. You know, when he says God in the flesh, or God incarnate, or God revealed in the flesh, this isn't what we mean when he says this. When we say this, we mean that he is the person of God, as in that he is the second person of the Holy Trinity, the eternal Logos, who is of one essence with the Father, thus making him God. By saying he's not God, you're changing the status of his person. So then he's no longer a divine person. So how can he in hypostasize the second nature at that point? Nestorius knows this to some extent. So rather than it being the assumption of a nature, it's the assumption of a man. Let me, let me illustrate for you this in, in as plain layman terms as possible. The Nestorian Christology is one in which Christ the man is an organ possessed by Christ the Logos. There are two Christ. He sees, the, you know, he sees the, the union as a union of persons, or as he would prefer to call it, a conjunction. Hence why they also say in that hymn, what we'll see in the next part. See how he says that she did not give birth to man unlike what the confused Nestorius said. Notice he refers to those who call Christ God as heretics. The video he did saying, oh, do I have a problem with the mother of God? No, he's lying because he's redefining the terms. It's a classic tactic. That is actually what a demagogue does. He plays on your bias. So what he's doing when he says that, he's saying no, because now I'm going to semantically rework this to mean that, well, my definition of Christ equals God, but this isn't what the actual reality is, because I'm still defining him as a conjunction of persons rather than a union of natures. So Christ for him is two, it's like two parallel lines, two enclosed, completely separate entities. What happens on the cross? Not even Nestorius can quite answer that. How does salvation occur? Well, it beats Nestorius because his theology is incorrect and it's incomplete. So we see here, people saying, oh, this doesn't matter. Oh, you're attacking a man of God. I'm not attacking a man of God. For one, he's not a man of God. I'm not assassinating his character. That's not what a character assassination is. I am destroying his heresy because that's what it is. And it's not even me who's doing it. I'm actually repeating what the church fathers of the past said. And I am just highlighting and distilling for you guys what was taught and why he, his heresy arc was anathematized. 
this creates a huge problem with the Eucharist because then whose body and blood do we eat? And if, if they are two distinct persons united in one prosopon, which yes, the term prosopon means person, but the way that Nestorius applies it is more like a mask. It's not an hypostasis, a concrete reality. You know, he attributes all the human actions of Christ, all the mutable actions to the human Christ, to Christ the man. Whereas all the divine stuff, you know, the healing, the miracles, the resurrection, he attributes to the logos. But there's one problem. When Christ then dies on the cross, he is truly separated from his divinity. So at that point, how is he resurrected and how is universal human nature metaphysically tied to him through his incarnation to the point where we could participate in the resurrection too? It's not possible. So right there, you have a Eucharist that isn't possible. You can't even say whose flesh you're eating. And you have a soteriological perspective that doesn't work because it completely redefines what it is. It completely redefines who and what Christ is. So then... We will see what he says next, and we'll dissect that. So right here, right here he says, but she gave birth to Christ. So again, he's switching the, the subject. He's changing the, the subject. Yeah, Arius taught that Christ was just a man, essentially, and not even that. He just said he was a lesser creation of the Father. So they're not even necessarily being honest as to what Arius taught. But at the same time, they're not being honest as to who Christ is. Because if Christ is consubstantial with the Father, if he is of one essence with the Father, then by virtue of his being and by virtue of his person, his hypostasis, being a divine person, he is God. He's not the Father. He's not the Holy Spirit. Nobody believes that. This, this whole string of thought that I've seen in the comments where people are trying to claim that that's what Marmari Emanuel is saying, this is all coming from Protestants who have zero idea of what Trinitarian theology is. They just will say three in one and not even know how to explain that. And they have no concept of Christology. And so they're just throwing out an explanation because they assume that people who honor the Virgin Theotokos think that she literally gave birth to an essence. Nobody believes she gave birth to divine nature. Your mother didn't give birth to a nature, she gave birth to a person. You're not isomorphic with humanity either. So let, let's get real with this. Most of these reactions are simply based off an emotional knee-jerk due to you not understanding the argument. That's all it is. And I can explain this till I'm blue in the face. I can't understand it for you. It's up to you to learn. And if you don't understand something right away, the worst thing you can do is throw your hands up in the air, go on and go on, go to type in some comments and say some things and be completely wrong because you are you want to you want to understand this well rewatch the video even if you want to find a way to disagree with me do yourself a favor don't repeat these goofy polemics that you're coming up with on the spot because your feelings are hurt because marmari emmanuel has been called an erroneous teacher i've never once said marmari emmanuel is a bad man i've never once said that he's evil i've never called him any names Calling him a heretic is what he is. He wants to call himself a bishop. He's not a bishop. My church does not recognize his, his, uh, his episcopal status. He's not a bishop. So I'm not going to call him a bishop. What, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be disobedient now? Because that's what all of you want. The, all of you who are saying, oh, no, can't we just get along and have union? That's all that matters. Like, you, you think that you're not moralistically relativistic. No, you're worse. You're theologically relativistic. And because you have a relativistic view on the person of Christ, where he's just an abstract concept that you're trying to imitate for virtue, you believe in a self-help ethic. You don't even believe in Christ. And to say that it's about a relationship and not religion is a complete dishonesty. Jesus never said, I came to establish relationships, or upon this rock I will establish my personal relationships with you. He came to establish a covenant, which is with a group of people. This is the cup of my blood of the new covenant. That is not individualized. That is meant to be shared across a group of people. That is by definition what a covenant is. He also didn't come to establish a Bible. He came to establish, uh, establish a church, a single body. So I don't know how more, much more clear it can get to you at this point. To, to re-summarize it, Christ is one hypostasis. He's one divine person who has two natures. He's fully God, fully man. He assumed the totality 
of universal human nature so that he would be able to unite us to himself. And of course, that we'd be lifted up to the Father. As St. Athanasius the Great said, God became man so that man might become God. This is an apotheosis. We don't believe in that, so don't misconstrue my words. Look into the context of what I'm saying. It's amazing how people will be quick to attack hesychasm, how they'll be quick to attack the notion of the uncreated light, calling it demonic, which in fact is rather demonic for them to do, given that the uncreated light was what the apostles saw coming off of Christ on Mount Tabor. And it's uncreated because it emanates from God's very energies. And God is uncreated. You know, that which is demonic cannot be uncreated. Demons are created. So right there, the person who wrote that idiotic blasphemous comment, guess what? You blaspheme God. You just went and called the devil uncreated. But it's important to know what you're talking about. You know, forgive me. There, the very, this is the most that you'll probably see me get pretty um, emphatic about something. And even then, uh, it's, it's not something I'm going to personally get too you know, upset about. But it's like, holy moly. What, what astounds me is the level of willful ignorance. You know, I actually have bothered to try to figure out what... Marmari actually believes before I was like, oh, no, no, he's definitely Nestorian. His church is Nestorian, his communion's Nestorian, openly, and he openly commemorates him as a saint. You know, <laughs> just for emphasis, I'm going to play that clip right now. Uh, here's Greek Orthodoxy now, and I think I, 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 have, I have something to say. What are we preaching here today? Nestorianism? Nestorius was the one that was saying the things that you're saying. But to Christ, as Saint Nestorius said, words of Marmari Emmanuel. So there you have it. He is a Nestorian. Nestorians don't call themselves Nestorians. Most Arians don't call themselves Arians. Modalists don't call themselves modalists. You know, oneness Pentecostals call themselves oneness Pentecostals. They're just modalists. You know, and they do believe that Christ is two persons because otherwise the whole Trinity died right there and then it was damned. How does that work? You know, the, the Nestorian concept, of course, of the Eucharist doesn't make sense if, you know, Christotokos is applied to the Theotokos. If she's Christotokos, she only gave birth to the man. And then if he's merely just uh, indwelled by the Logos, indwelled and imbued by him, well, then there's no consubstantiality with the Father. There's no true union. It's a union of persons, not a union of natures. And the person is the thing that matters. You know, the person is what matters. It's not, it's not this, this idea of, well, this is the person, this. Because that's usually what Nestorius means when he's using the term Christ. He's referring to the body, to the individual, the prosopon, in other words. He's not referring to the bigger picture. It's uncircumscribable. That doesn't mean that he can't be born of a virgin or that we can't say that God was a two to three week old baby because he was. He took on human nature. He as a person is divine and unlimited. You know, it, it shouldn't be that hard. It really shouldn't. And if you truly believe that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth and the life and that no one comes to the father except for him, that he's the sole mediator between God and man, then in all reality, you should not be, you, you should be encouraging Marmari Emmanuel to repent by not giving him the attention and you know what yeah if he wants if he wants to call me he can go right ahead and if his priests want to you know do what they did with the last video and copy and paste this one and slander and say oh you know he's got it wrong his church has got it wrong ha, ha, ha. he should read the blah 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 you know some abstract word that I can't say that you know has what apparently no English equivalent oh yeah sure I'll get right on that as soon as I somehow learn Syriac you know, the, Syri the real Syriac Orthodox Church, the Antiochian Orthodox Church, anathematized these guys. They anathematized Nestorius with us back in the day, back in, in 427, or around that time in the Third Ecumenical Council. Um, you know, the fact, that, uh, <laughs> the fact that people are saying he's not a Nestorian, he says that Christ has two natures. His definition of two natures is two persons. It's not two natures in the sense of what we're talking about in the Aristotelian sense in which it's, it's an eminent reality. He doesn't even, he, he doesn't use the term hypostasis. That should tell you right there, we don't believe the same thing. And all an hypostasis means is a concrete reality in the case of Christ and in the case of you and me, that means person. There you go. Nice and simple. If you can't follow that again, go back and rewatch this video. 
go look up some things. You can find PDFs online. Go go join the, the Discord with Jay Dyer and David Airhan. They've got a great PDF library in there. You can ask questions to the people there. They're pretty knowledgeable. Just be respectful. I didn't make this video to be popular. I really didn't. I made this video to tell the truth. Because as I see it, Marmari Emanuel, as good intentioned as he may be, is spreading heresy. And maybe he doesn't know any better, sure. But he's not my brother. I'm not going to call him up. I'm not going to bother trying to get a hold of him. When in all reality, it is far worse that there are people being deceived daily by this, buying into this nonsense, and no one's speaking up about it. So I'm going to speak up about it. As a priest and as someone who has parishioners who might see some of his stuff in the future and get misled by him or confused, you, know, you have to remember that the theology of a person colors everything they do right down to the praxis. Right down to how they pray, to how they think. Let's be very clear what love is. Love is not honeyed words. It's not always talking soft. Love is being honest. It's being truthful. It's saying, hey, look, you're standing on the road. You think it's safe to cross and a bus is coming. And I'm going to grab you by your shirt and pull you back if I have to, because I'm not going to let you get hit by the bus. If, if I didn't say anything... And I was just going to take this nice, soft, secular, kind of worldly political route with, oh, let's be all kumbaya. Guess what? I'm lying to you. I'm not telling the truth. I'm just trying to get you to like me. I'm not trying to get anyone to like me. All I want is for people to come to the truth. I want people to come to Christ, to experience him, to come and taste and see that the Lord is good, to receive the body and blood, the deified flesh and blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, and not whatever non-existent concept and historians can't possibly support. So with that said, avoid this. Avoid Marmari Emanuel. And, you know, don't just give up when you don't understand something. Try hard. Try harder. Strive for it. You know, knowledge is its own reward sometimes. You have to be willing to put in the work to get the long-term payoff, and not just be t uh, chasing dopamine. You know, people have become dopamine Christians online. They want to watch these little shorts, these little snippets, get their hit of dopamine, their feel-good moment, maybe something airy and spiritual, and then they're gone. That, if the airiness settles down, the spiritual high goes, and they're right back where they started. You know, your faith can't be based on Marmari Emanuel, and it certainly can't be based on me. I'm just a priest. I want everyone watching this video to realize that the ultimate message of this is to base your faith in truth, to worship God in spirit and truth. And that begins with knowing the truth of the person of Christ, his identity, who he is, what we understand about him with Christology, because that will impact everything going forward. And yes, it will impact your relationship with him because you can't have a genuine relationship with a person if you hold a bunch of false premises about them. At that point, you're, you're dating an idea, you're, you're with an idea, you're courting an idea, you're not actually engaging with the reality. So let's engage in reality. Let's turn away from these snippy little TikTok edits and sermons. All they are is a dopamine-fueled emotional roller coaster. That's all it is. It's like listening to an evangelical Protestant. All fervor, no substance. It's literally like eating empty carbohydrates. You know, they taste good. Maybe they feel good for a moment, and then you're bloated and tired. It's the same in the spiritual life. So... That said, dear ones, I actually do love you. <laughs> you know, and people will say, oh, you're not loving, Father. No, I, I, I speak briefly, concisely, and to the point, and I try to use as few words as possible. And it's not always easy when people throw me a wall of text and they expect me to read all of it. I'm sorry. I've literally gotten thousands of comments over the past few days. I'm not going to read your five-page comment that you think in your imagination that I'm going to somehow read and be impacted by. You know, I, I've seen what's in some of these things. And I think the person that, you know, who, who wrote the, the last latest comment to me knows I'm, I'm mentioning this. It, it's just pointless. You're wasting your time. You're wasting my time. I'm not going to read all that. No matter what you say, even if it's good, I'm just going to give you a quick acknowledgement and say, yep, thank you. And if it's garbage, I'm going to say, yeah, this is these are a couple of points where you're wrong. Move on. So, again, you know, I hope this video helped. Uh, but... We, we got to be honest. I got to be honest. This, the, the Christ that Marmari Emanuel is leading people to is not the one in the Bible. God bless you all.
good night. And you know what? I'll see you in the next one.